Hello everybody and welcome to Adobe Live. We'd like to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land in which we are creating and streaming from today and pay our respects to elders past, present and emerging. My name is Flynn. I'm hosting today once again. I'm very excited to um, be joined by Joy Chang. Hello, Joy. How are you doing? Hi. <laughs> welcome to Adobe Live for the very first time. Thank you. It's exciting. This is exciting. Yeah, we've been chatting about uh, you coming on. I'm excited that the day is finally finally here. Um, you're an artist from Melbourne. Um, yes. And yeah, as soon as I saw your work, like it's very experimental. Um, you're in lots of different spaces, um, like <laughs> Web3 stuff. You've got this traditional artist background. A lot of your work output I'm seeing is digital. It's super, super cool. So can you tell us a little bit more about yourself, please? Sure. Um, my background is actually in town planning. So I work for local oh, government. Oh, I missed that. that. Like... <laughs> okay. Of course it <laughs> for, was. Of course it was. Yes, yes, yes. So I, I, I've, I guess I was designing cities. Right. And then I went on maternity leave. And I don't know, I, I went on maternity leave thinking I'd paint some big paintings for my house. And throughout the process, because it was quite abstract and intuitive, I just like fell in love with the whole process and I was like, I want to continue doing this. So sure. I made a conscious decision after kids that I kind of put some time aside to pursue art and I'm really glad I did because I I think it's given me the space um to really find myself again after kids because you almost be just become mum full time and totally. then after that you're like oh, I just need some time for myself and I'm so glad I did because now I get to do um you know digital art I get to do create anything um that I feel passionate or really inspired by um whenever I want to which is fun. That's awesome. Mm. I, I love that. Well, maybe we'll dig in more into the, the shift from town planning to <laughs> full-time artists. That's awesome. But, um, but, uh, but yeah, great. Fantastic. And um, maybe we can just have a look at some of your work before we get stuck sure. in. We are going to do some cool stuff today. Um, we're going to be doing some um, Firefly and Gen, Gen AI sort of stuff. I'll let Joy yes. kind of talk a little bit more in detail about that. That is coming. We are live. If you have any questions uh, for Joy or myself or any of the topics or anything, um, throw those questions in behance and we'd love to hear from you as well if you are watching live. Um, let's jump over to some of your work, check out some of that mm. stuff. I'm sharing your screen now and then we'll kind of get into the topic for today. Cool. Um, so I think I mentioned when I first started to paint, it was really physical artwork. So it was a lot of like fluid mediums. I loved playing with alcohol inks and you can see in the middle here, I've got some like, I incorporated a lot of Chinese inks. You can kind of see these giant brushes that I have because yeah. um, I really love the calligraphy marks it makes. And I think when you use mediums like Chinese ink and brushes, the it's really the the movements that are really important and you have to be really certain when you put down a stroke there's no holding back in chinese calligraphy so right. whatever market is that's kind of what it's going to be and i think mixing that with new mediums like alcohol inks and fluid acrylics just kind of allow me to experiment and just pretty much become a scientist and just do whatever I wanted. Um, after I had my son, I decided to give digital art a go because it was so hard for me to take out the canvases and the paints because I love to paint like big size canvases. Right. And with dogs and everything, it was just too messy to do that in the house. Yeah, two kids, and I three dogs myself. is a lot. Yes. We were that's... talking about before we went <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yeah, so dog fur, kid handprints, everything. Yeah. Um, so, I was, and I was really, I've always loved um, when people share like 3D artworks and I feel like being a town planner and having a bit of understanding architecture and design, it was something I was just really intrigued by and I was like, you know what, I am on maternity leave again. I'm going to learn how to do 3D modeling and it might help me with my physical paintings. So I learned to use Blender and I guess I can see in this artwork it was like my first digital animation and it was also the time when nfts and things were uh, kicking off so it was right. a really big learning experience for me um, and through that i also got to um i also got to make like these uh, let me show you these motion graphics. So this project was how I learned to animate and do different textures <clears throat> in 3D. Yeah. And then from there, I got to just kind of continue experimenting. And that's when AI started becoming popular. And so when Firefly came out, I, I was like, oh my God, text to image, what is this? And I started <laughs> exploring and I realized how fun it was, but also 
the flexibility of kind of lying in bed, putting down my daughter, waiting for her to sleep and just kind of creating these textures that I could then use in 3D or whether I just kind of directly output and draw on top of and just layer and start making collages with. So it's kind of like I'm collecting all these different mediums to be able to then create something unique that's more personal to me. Oh, yeah. Cool. I love that. I love that process. Um, well, that's, yeah, that's fantastic. I think you have your Instagram there as well, and then we'll jump in. Yes. We want to make sure we have enough time for everything. But yeah, you've got your Instagram there as well. Um, with, yeah, yes. some just amazing work, quite diverse as well, I will say. Um, yeah, so this is more like physical paintings. Uh -huh. um, but I think one of the things that's consistent throughout any type of mediums, I love these like fluid mediums, like this flowy effects. I love florals, as you can see, like it's just... I don't know, even if I try to get away from it, when I come back to whatever mediums, there's always these things. Like I started making ceramics and I just default to like these like wavy shapes. Oh, right. and it's not on purpose. <laughs> it just kind of comes to you. And I think it comes with like the volume of work that you produce. You just end up finding things that you're naturally drawn to. And for me, it's like these type of movement, flowy pieces that I absolutely Like a natural love. style that kind of comes out. Yeah, yeah I think so. Process. Yeah. It's really cool. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. All right. Well, we could probably go through your work for the whole hour, but let's get let's let's get stuck into it. Um, yes. What did you have in mind for us today? So uh, I think <laughs> um, I, I really wanted to recreate um, this dragon artwork that you see here. Yeah, awesome. And I wanted to showcase how I did it and some of the thinking behind the the reasoning and the ideas. Um, and I think in the video I talked about how it's the first time I get to go back to Shanghai this year after COVID and with my kids. So I wanted to send like a little digital postcard to my family to wish them happy Chinese New Year. And I was like, oh, let's make this dragon with like this um, background of Shanghai in the background. And so I'm going to try and do it all with AI, apart from the that I used my iPad to draw out and animate. Mm. Um, it was all really done in Photoshop and Firefly. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I was going to ask you if you do all the calligraphy yourself. Of course, the answer is yes after the intro. <laughs> um. <laughs> well, I, I, I did the original writing, like the cleanup of it in Fresco, but I didn't realize you could do animation in Photoshop. So I ended up just using my mouse to like trace all these different steps so it looked like it filled up the page. Oh, I love that. I love that. That took so long. And then it was like two seconds of animation. I was like, oh, I should have. Takes a long time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 That's fantastic. Should we get into it? Yeah, let's get into it. Um, hi, chat okay. as well. Alejandro is saying the background pictures are really cute, Joy. Um, oh, thank you. And the dandelion flower is incredible. Um, and uh, El Alessandra actually asked, I've got to ask, what is your favorite medium and your least favorite medium? Ooh. <laughs> I guess since oh, you do so much. Yeah, I do so many. Um, my favorite, I don't know. I feel like as you collect different mediums, it's like a, a different toolbox that you add and you can, I guess, use bits of pieces that you, you gain from each and apply it to another. And as random as it is, like since starting ceramics last year, it's really helped me understand like different forms in the 3D space a lot better. Um, even right. though like I, I have a good eye for 3D things already because of my background, but it, it just kind of gives you that additional understanding of like the the weight and all those different type of things. But my favorite at the moment is probably ceramics because, because it's, it's a new thing that I'm learning and I'm learning to apply it. And the, the weird thing about it is like everything I learned previously, you can't apply it to ceramics because with artworks, I can, I can, keep chipping at it until it's ready. Right. Whereas with ceramics, it's really about letting go. Like you yeah. can't hold on to whatever you made because the next step is just going to die and crack and break. And so you just really have to let go, which I think really helped me with, um, you know, some of my digital artworks. Like I just can't get specific parts of it right. So I'll just, yeah. I guess I'll just leave it, you know? So it's that men mentality that comes with it. Least favorite, oh, I don't have a least favorite. You don't have to have like a least like favorite, it. yeah. <laughs> uh, I like I, I love the output of 3D animation and like 3D modeling, mm -hmm. but it's probably the most tedious. And right. like it's like the more you know, the less you know, because the more like I think I've watched maybe, you know, 50 tutorials and the more I get into the tutorial to like the nuances of like animation, texturing and and the more I watch, I'm like, I don't know anything. <laughs> and it feels like you're back at step one. So that's probably the least favorite, but it's also the biggest 
like growth that you can have yeah. because you see the first animation that you make versus the ones now with like you know more realistic feel and yeah yeah oh cool awesome hmm. all right then that's great great question thanks alessandra and uh, thanks for the answer thank you cool um actually before we jump into photoshop i might um share how i got to deciding that i want to use um this artwork as a base cool. for my dragon. Uh, let me share. So um, on my Instagram end of last year, around November, when um, a lot of people do Inktober, uh, October uh, for Inktober, I did like an AI version of it. I didn't have time to create um, like an ink drawing every day. So I was like, I'm going to just use it, use the prompts. Um, I think I use, um, I did Peachtober and I used the same prompts but created AI artworks. And I think it was a really great way for me to really explore things I normally wouldn't make. And one of the surprising things was I created this little fuzzy character that I had on my Instagram page before. Oh, this little guy. Yeah. This guy, yeah. And I, I absolutely loved it. Like a lot of people loved it. And my kids loved it. And I was like, oh, my God, this, this is such cute character play that I, I wouldn't have created otherwise without you know going out of my comfort zone because right. the prompt was just I and I was like let's make a cute character with lots of different eyes and this little alien thing popped up and then this one was um grub which kind of this is the prompt that I've used to then create the eye one because I really loved how it turned out with like the fuzzy fur and the little antennas and the wings they were just so cute and I was like oh maybe I can make a dragon like using something similar, which is how I got to this stage. Nice. But the more I looked at it, the more I was like, it doesn't look like a Chinese dragon. Like if I sent this to my family in China, they'll be like, what is this? Like, this, You've been like, in Australia too long. Like yeah, what's going on? Like, <laughs> like has your Chinese um, defaulted back to like, yeah. what is this thing? But it was very cute nonetheless. I was like, okay, hey, maybe let's skip from this to something different. So I played around with the style reference. So in Firefly, the really cool thing is you can put in a, a style reference already in the system, which um, I think there's, you know, like at least 20, 30 that I play with all the time just to see what differences it'll give me. Yeah. And this one was like the ink one. And I was like, oh, this one looks really cool. And I, I thought about using something like this and building it and creating like a larger collage, but I just feel like the the tones were limited because I love my color, I love my flow. So I was like, maybe I'll, I'll put this um, in the back of my mind, maybe for a future thing, or I could just use some of the parts of it. Like I love the painterly clouds and I love like the blend of the gradient. So as I'm exporting all of these different um, trial and error exports, I'm also deciding what I like to keep and what I want to continue. So within the prompts, I'm also playing with the words um, very differently. So I think at the start, it was like, you know, of a cute dragon with little wings. Right. Um, and then it was, um, you know, I tried dragon, Chinese dragon with like claws to give me the silhouette of arms and claws and wings because right. I think it started to look more serpenty. Um, and I was like, oh, maybe like, you know, the paper cut type of design the 3d elements because in the style reference there's something similar and i just wanted to kind of get um i think the style reference actually picks up a lot of what character it has originally in the image so this song was like very monotone i just wanted to see like what type of gradients i could get and what type of depth of field potentially give me some um composition ideas and then from then i was like oh i actually really like the the mix of the city versus the dragon how it kind of intertwined and i was like since I'm from Shanghai, I need to have the Pearl Tower. So I kind of physically typed that in to give me the skyscrapers. And then I was like, let's um, play with, uh, and I quite like the wings. So I kind of tried like illustration, like sky and body. And I was like, this is more landscape. And this is one of my favorite style references. It's kind of, I think one of the popular ones, but if you, you can't really tell in the small image, but in the details, it's got like knit like some like a woolly jumper right. or something on the floor and I, that kind of almost gives you like this crochet look yeah. and and, lo and the funny is is i actually really love when ai gives you unexpected outputs like there's like a kid's face here yeah like, so <laughs> i discovered that kid's face because i used that for the artwork yeah, yeah, i was the, like oh the they chose it. i didn't even notice and i was trying to crop it in and i was like where's that face yeah. coming from yeah 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 <laughs> Um, and yeah. like, I remember when I first started using it, like, it was really hard for the generative um, AI to figure out like 
people and hands and fingers. Sure, so I yeah. kept a lot of AI generated images that had like two arms and six fingers because it's like it's evolving so quickly that you're never going to get that'll be a thing of yeah again. of the past be yeah like, so it's when. like really it's almost like exactly. that now. so yeah. it's like a time capsule of some of my old exports and i'm like wish i saved some more because some of them were like really funny yep. <laughs> but some of them were really magical at the same time like when i first started playing with um the different prompts like the coolest thing about um using ai as a medium and as a tool for your art is really thinking about not just being descriptive in what you want the output to be. So I think when you first start using AI, don't think of what you need it to look like. Just kind of keep your mind open and put in prompts like music lyrics or, you know, your favourite poem, um, like a type of feeling that you want to evoke. Um, I use like romantic feeling or something like anything that you th will be hard to convey if you're physically drawing. So don't think of it like someone, like you're talking to an artist, draw this for me and tell them exactly what it is. Um, you know, give it things that makes use of the AI that's that we can't really think of. So, and as so I love playing with like, like I think I've put in stories before just to see what it'll give me. And then some of these things will then trigger other ideas that you might have. And then you start picking out things you like that you don't like, and then you can add it to your future prompts. Oh, that's cool. and that's I like Lots that. of nuances in some of the different wording. So I really love this. And then this could almost be like, you know, a story character, like, um, you know, for illustration, story generation. But I thought for my purposes, I kind of just wanted like a traditional Chinese dragon to celebrate Lunar New Year. Yeah. Um, so then I went back to basics and I was like, dragon flying in the sky, <laughs> just to see right. what the most basic prompts will be. And I always start with this, like if I'm creating a flower, I just want to see what the default flower that AI will generate. So I know what it's just going to automatically lean towards. So if I put a flower, sometimes it might default to like a rose. I was like, okay, that, that means if I do want roses, I can just use flower. If I want it to be specific lilies or um, water lilies or any type of different flower, then you have to physically tell it what size, the volume, and then kind of give it more description. So you know how to play with the, uh, the inputs to get the outputs that you like. So from this nice. one, I then um, was like, oh, let's try. Oh, this one is wrong. I just kind of clicked wrong. I, I changed from the style from art to photo and you can see the difference between this and that straight away yeah like this one looks a lot more realistic it's kind of really flying in the sky and i was like oh, i thought this is much cooler than this one because this one almost looks like you know illustration which is not what i'm after so this kind of gave me the right idea so i'm going to be using the photo as a style um and then from there it's like oh, i want to I wonder what the difference will be if I start playing with like the different effects in Firefly and bioluminescence kind of gives you that glowy and I kind of did um you know, like dragon in some sort of cloud setting to be exact. <laughs> Is that what you type? I, I think some heard, sort of cloud setting? Yeah. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool. In the style of photorealistic um, painting, intricate ceiling designs because I was thinking like something very detailed. Right. Um, I think I I think I, so for every screenshot and every image that you see that I'm sharing, there would have been like 30 to 50 attempts to right. get to this. Yeah. So just, I think, I think when people first use Firefly, they see some of these really crazy, really beautiful images. They'll do the, you know, dragonfly in the sky, get the, the, get the first one and feel really disheartened and be like, oh, mine doesn't look like realistic. Mine doesn't look like that. Right. I think it really comes down to playing. So don't think that you're going to get this. Um, you know, these really cool styles straight away because it takes time just like any other medium um, and like it takes time to play and explore and just have fun with. So I think to get this one, I tried, I wanted some like these Chinese clouds, like um, a lot of the Chinese his, like illustrations have like the curly wavy clouds. And when I typed in clouds, it kind of gave me like fogginess and, or like one or two clouds, so, which is why like I got in some sort of cloud setting. And that I think it's the setting that kind of gave it the volume of clouds to yeah, get this from. Yeah, interesting. And I was like, yeah, so I was like, oh, this is kind of what I'm feeling, but I kind of want to bring in um, the city and the, like the building element to kind of blend some sort of realism to it and i was like oh but i like flowers too so let's add some flowers and see what that will look like and i was like oh this is really pretty um even this 
would have been you know really nice to use because it's the year of the wood dragon as i can make it more like earthy tones um post edit but i was like oh let's keep playing and see what happens and then i started adding in like the band which is like the cityscape that most people associate shanghai with which is opposite of the pearl tower in china it's like got the really famous european city so i was like let's put that in just to see what we start getting and i think this one didn't have the photo style so it's kind of gone back to that drawing look but i really liked the colors and the the way it's coming back so then like a bit more tweaking i think this one had the photo setting so all of a sudden it's changed again um yep. and and i think with this one i'm I was like, oh, maybe I should do like a phoenix even. Um, so this is like a phoenix cross with dragon because I asked for it to be, you know, with wings and claws and things. And I was like, oh, it kind of looks too much like a bird. So I was like, let's um, let's go back and keep playing. So these are some of the, you know, really cool exports I just thought was really amazing. And a lot of the images I share are actually most of all, pretty much all of the exports I share on my Instagram are actually just direct exports. I don't do much post editing unless i i'm creating it for like a, a right. artwork or something that i'm going to use in one of my animations or one of my 3d uh, motion graphic designs or some like a poses type of thing so i think even if you look at it you know some of the claws won't look right so these are i think i just share it because i just thought they they look great yep. as you can see at the bottom look how many there's a effects. lot yeah and i noticed that yeah. how long the the prompting is getting as well mm -hmm. um not mm -hmm. to derail or anything james barnard in the chat Friend of the mm. friend of Adobe Live, um, James told me before that you guys <laughs> sat next to each other at Adobe Max. Yes, yes, so and then we related on like funny kid stories. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, you meet another parent. That's all you talk about. Yeah, it's um, like, oh, yes. Well, hello, James, and uh, James says hi, hi to you as well. Hi. Yeah. Thank sorry. you for joining in. Um, yeah, and then from there, I cut off the the prompt. But before this, I was. Ooh, I like that um, one on the left. It's kind of. Yeah, so I'll show you where I got this from. It was from my Instagram. Like I started playing with um, like a lot of the fluid movements. I think it was from this type of um, like animation that I was like, oh, I really love wow. that. I wonder if I can apply it to the dragon because I was just playing around with like this, these sorts of like wavy motions and these type of um, effects. And I was like, oh, if I put a dragon in front of this, I'll look nice. Yeah. Um, so I think I, I ended up using something similar which had like uh like fabric or material something floating uh with the dragon prompts that i was working on and i started getting these really cool designs and i was like this is amazing and then i think i kept tweaking the dragon to make it uh, more prominent yeah. um compared to like the the materials or the fog all, the, all those type of things and and then i started getting these really cool ones i was like oh yeah <laughs> so I got and to play around with material one. prompts, I think. Yeah, uh, yeah. Very yeah. cool. And then, um, and I think in an I specified the colors I wanted, like magenta, oranges, um, to give me this color scheme that I love. Um, and then some of them was really su surprising. Like I, this one had a dragon prompt. There's no dragon in there. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think these ones I added like cherry blossoms to give me some floral elements because yeah. I was like, oh, yeah, the wood dragon. But like some of these are just so cool. Like I, I thought about using this one, but I think this is the first one that I got, which was very similar to that, um, the one on my Instagram with just the material floating. So, but with the dragon head. And I was like, oh, this is heading in the right direction like these were the ones I love then I was like this one probably had the most detailed face that I really liked which is how I ended up on this so we're here, we're here. <laughs> we can finally move, we can finally <laughs> move into Photoshop all right that's great I love hearing the the prompt the prompt game stuff though that's like super mm. super important and you're right I think sometimes you'll get you can get stuck in and we've done it many times on the stream as well I sort of get stuck in just not quite get there i think you do as you said have to spend quite a lot of time to really finesse yeah, it and the learning i, I think yeah. also when you start prompting uh, like, again like I, I mentioned before don't um go in with the expected image in mind right and if it's not going towards where you want it to go just kind of mm -hmm. see where it, it will take you like for this one i tried to do the legs and the wings but it kept going back to the flying phoenix looking things so i was like there's no way i'm going to get 
like a body with this head <laughs> just like out of the hundreds of prompts that I got like none of them were coming out with the right body versus the head so like, I'll just do it in Photoshop and that's what Photoshop is so great at and also I couldn't get um, this type of dragon like a dragon that I liked with the background that I liked which is why I ended up adding like um, like a second Firefly export of like a Shanghai city that I ended up making and I use similar um, I tried to get like a sky match in terms of the time of day so the clouds don't look too different like yeah. one is like morning one is at night so that way i know straight away that they will blend nicely together um so for this instance i'm like well, i'll put the dragon up here so i can make the body long and flow down so i think the the cool thing is in photoshop you can start you know playing around with the arrangements to see where you want the generative expand to happen um and then i like chop in the, the city depending on the scale that I want I was like I kind of want the dragon to be in the front and uh, the city in the background so that it's kind of coming at it <laughs> and then I pretty much selected the edges and then just blend and then I was like oh this looks cool and then you just um yeah, like pick the type of clouds you want but thinking about what you want to add further um later on which one might work better is kind of the thinking behind some of this yeah, yeah. are there any questions um there was actually a question before um uh alessandra asked a little bit ago i was just waiting for a good spot for it but um what's something from your culture that you appreciate and brings you joy no pun intended uh integrated <laughs> into your art making oh i think like a lot of the motives that I end up using, like the waves and the fluidity, um, regardless of the mediums, whether it's my abstract paintings, I can kind of see, like I love using the the brush strokes. And, and I think that's something I, I, I learned a bit of Chinese ink painting when I was on maternity leave the first time around with um, a wonderful teacher called Echo Wu. She's based in Melbourne. And like just one term of her class really gave me a, a better appreciation of like the Chinese um, ink paintings and and like what's uh, what's important to leave out of it is just as important as what you put into it so kind of that negative space all of those things and I think um, in terms of my culture like that appreciation for texture in the brush strokes and the difference in the paintbrushes really help me think about the choices I'm making is very intentional even if it's to do a little or, or something a little bit of or a little or something more prominent I think really thinking about that type of balance has helped me um, with the the artworks but I think also naturally the aesthetics that I like are probably driven by my upbringing because um, I lived in Shanghai until I was about seven before I came to Australia. So a lot right. of the things that I like and the culture stuff, I guess I got to do a bit of both, like of growing up in China and in Australia. So kind of combining that is something I really enjoy. Yeah. Mm. No, that's cool. That's great. Great question and answer. Thanks. Um, so yeah, blending these images together in Photoshop, do you, did you just kind of have the dragon first and then you're thinking, okay, I need to find a background and doing it kind of organically or do you kind of get all the images and then put it in and make it work? I think if I got the dragon to like, if I got a, a dragon with a long body that I wanted in the, this type of, you know what I wish Firefly could do? Oh yeah. Can you, can you put in a word yes, for me? Totally. Yeah. To have, to have, um, Cause I, I do a lot of um, the posts for my Instagram, but the, but the um, portrait size is always just three to four ratio where I really want it to be 16 by nine. Oh, so that, I see. That you can do like the widescreen. Widescreen. Yeah. That doesn't you solve it. Do it. But you can't do it for. Oh, um, you want extra portrait. vertical length. Yeah. 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 I see. All so right. then I have to go into Photoshop to generative extend, it which adds another step. It would be smart to have them perfect ratios for social, wouldn't it? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay. Cool. I can't remember if I put it in my suggestion box once, maybe. Yeah. But, yeah. There is it. Yeah. There is functionality in there to give feedback because, like, yeah, I think yeah, it's even I, still I technically I, in beta. I, I, so. I, 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 um, I'll, be going, going but hey, again, going. <laughs> I'll keep it up here if I'm ever talking to the Firefly yes. team. Yes. Like, hey, please. Thank you. I'll send them this live. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, so then um, from here, 
you can see I kind of chopped away some of the clouds. Uh, it's not that like the square one wouldn't work, but I just don't want it to overthink and I just wanted like a better blend. Um, and then see how this uh, one isn't coming out. And I think it just, uh, maybe I deleted a layer, sorry. So you kind of cut out stuff that you don't want yeah, AI so to work to to kind of grow from, right? Because you're going yeah, to use yeah. the generative expand. Yeah, I think that's something yeah. that a lot of people do miss. Like it, it is it is quite useful because otherwise you can dr drag something down. Like, oh, why does it keep making this cliff? Because there's like yeah, a little cliff can... in the corner or something. Yeah, because mm. it, it needs a bit of information for it to expand. So right. whatever that edge is, it'll kind of grab a bit of it. Like for for example, this one, it's given it legs because it's like, oh, maybe that's a bottom of the body, yep. which it's fine. And like, if that's what I wanted, maybe I'd continue with this and change this to the leg and give it more specific prompt. And what I find is um, the generative fill in Photoshop doesn't come out as high quality in terms of the details for compared to Firefly because it's trying to take in all the information on your canvas and sometimes it'll actually confuse it. And then with the work that I do, some of the collaging that I do with my physical paintings and digital exports, the, I have like so many layers that it starts spitting out things that it's like some texture, some realistic bits where sometimes I just want it to be realistic or sometimes I just want it to be texture. So I'm really using Photoshop to kind of just use the two to blend the mediums together versus using it as a direct creation tool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and so for the water bit, I'm, I'm just thinking about once I put the body there, which part of the water I'm actually going to keep and I'm going to look more realistic. So this one, I really like the colors and it's like painterly, but that's not oh, one yeah, I'm going for. I was going to say painterly as well. Yeah. Yeah, and then um, over here, if I have the body here, this bit might look a bit random. So I kept this one because it's got the soft glow. Um, and then I was like, oh, this bit looks really harsh from my cutout. So then I blended it a bit more. Uh, and how do you go about blending it? When you say you blend, blended it, hmm. how would you go about that? So I literally just select like this bit. Mm -hmm. um, so example before. Yeah, so maybe this bit, it's like, oh, maybe it doesn't look that nice. And I'll just press generative fill. I normally just do your empty prompt and then I'll generate until right. I find something nice. Because I find if I, if I give it too much detail, because with generative AI, it'll grab onto that word and then that word is associated with something that's the most obvious. So if I say blend, it won't know what blend means. <laughs> right. But yeah. if you leave a blank, they're like, oh, maybe this is what she wants. Right. So my suggestion is just leave it blank. And then if it really doesn't work, then try changing it. Sometimes if I'm blending um, quickly just to get a base background color or like a gradient at the back, I can select lots of it. But once it starts going, or once I get into the detail, I do smaller sections. Right. So I have a bit more control. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I think this bit, I was like, oh, maybe it's too dark. So I just changed it. Uh, oh, and then this bit is where <laughs> I got really lazy. I was like, I can't get the body. I'm just going to crop it. So this bit is pretty much, I just cropped out this bit and then like I copy paste. A copy of it and yeah. copy paste. I was like, yeah, this is roughly where I want, this is roughly where I want the body. And then I did it another time to connect it. So I get this like, wavy body yeah. <laughs> it's like a cheat cheat code yeah. <laughs> so like this is the composition i want and then yeah to get the edges i literally just like what i mentioned before like i'll select these bits um, i think initially i selected this bit for example to blend mm. uh, press generate and i did it two sides at the same time and it was too much like it was like what is, what is this thing right. i couldn't recognize what it was and it just became a blur so then i just do it more slowly and then i start getting like these type of details and that's without kind of, putting anything in the prompt that's just letting the mm. ai kind of figure out what the image is and what you might want yeah there. i think this, this one these are the outputs yeah. that i got rid of and I was like, oh, this lighting don't ma doesn't match. Mm. So in here, you can see all the prompts are left blank. 
Uh, but then I was like, oh, these are these are the nicer yeah. exports. And then this one you can see on this other side. I was like, I don't really want that weird island bit because it doesn't match the other side. So let's get rid of that. So I selected a bit more than mm. I normally would. And then from here you can kind of see the other. I was like, which one gave me the cleaner city because that's the focus um, right. I was after. Yeah. And then this is the tummy bit. I was like, let's get rid of this crack. I like that you label your um, <laughs> layers and I like tummy. tummy They're two. normally layer one, layer two, layer three, layer four. So I was like, oh, this is going on live. People will judge Oh, you tidied like, it up just really, for us. I tidied yeah. it up, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Too embarrassed to show you what my normal <laughs> desk looks That's like. That's great. Uh, um, oh, yeah, so this, this is a fun bit. Um, with the sky, I really wanted to have the moon because of the lunar calendar. Mm -hmm. And yep. when I typed moon, so I think in this prompt, it has like black night sky with full moon peeking through. And I got this and I was like, uh, it's really harsh. <laughs> right. I think I started off with night sky. You got some stars. I was like, oh, sorry. Whoa, where's my mouse? It's back. Okay. It's back. Um, and then got like little moon in this variation, but I thought it was a bit too bright for what mm. I wanted to be kind of like almost like um when the sun sets you get some sun and the moon shining through so i wanted that contrast um and then i got this i'm like oh this is not looking good this is like the the photoshop kind of trying to work out what type of image this is and right. then not quite sure and giving you a, a mix so what i ended up doing was i just wanted to blend the sky a bit better so i kind of start typing black sky um with I think clouds or something and then it started blending it a bit nicer and I was like oh this one's a bit better at least it's a, a smoother gradient I'll right. use that as a base and then I went into Firefly and just got like a you know moon cityscape image that's a photo based one um, to get this image and I was like I'll just crop this out um, with just the moon yeah to this and, and I think do you, it. Do, you, do you find that mm. jumping into Firefly like the, on the website you tend mm. to get like a high quality result at the moment. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I think I'm not sure if Photoshop is still using version one or is it using version two now? Yeah. I'm yeah. I'm like 90% sure that that's the case. I'm pretty sure the Firefly, yeah. like Firefly in the web. So a bit of a, yeah. bit of a pro tip for anyone out there. Mm. Um, functionality exists within Photoshop, but yes, I think mm. both of us are like okay. pretty sure that it's. Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure. But surprisingly, I had like, there's a couple of prompts that I use that I go back to version one for. Oh, interesting. Right. Because I like the way it looks. Right. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And go. I think that's like the more abstracty, flowy type of stuff that I like right. with like the specific building texture that I like. Yeah, it comes down to like hundreds of exports. Like I still like this one. So I remember the version and the prompt for that so I can that's go amazing. back and use it. Yeah. I might share what it looks like actually. Um, and then, yeah, and then again, I'll select, whoops. How do I put this? Not very good at Photoshop, if you can't tell. <laughs> yeah, so I'll select the edges. Um, like if I if I want to get rid of the I don't know what these things are called the dragon fluff bits. Yeah, I can remove them first, or if I wanted to blend, I can select them. But um, yeah, if it's not really working, you can just do like a clean edge around here first, just to um, get it to blend together, and then you can do it bit by bit, or you can do it all together, see what it looks like. Um, so I think these are my variations. Yeah, once I put the moon in, that's a bit I want to keep. So it's not going to change any of it. And then it's really just deciding which type of sky I liked. I can't remember which one I picked. Was it this one? <laughs> um, yeah, and then now you've got like a semi-realistic moon in a position that you want with like a rough blend of the night sky that I liked. So it's transitioning a lot nicer than the first export where I just had, you know, typing in nighttime prompt with, you know, the moon, yep. for example. Yeah. Um, and then that's pretty much it. I think I expanded it just to kind of show what it could look like. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so this one's just with generative expand. I wanted to see what it could look like. Um, 
going out a bit further. It's gone a bit crazy um, there, hasn't it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But I just wanted to like see what it will, it thinks the rest of the body looks yeah. like. Yeah. 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 And then just keep adjusting. Um, I tried to export like the AI Firefly text ones. Oh to, yeah, like, the, the text to, yeah. yeah the happy new year in chinese and i was like oh the it was supposed to be balloons and i had an initial animation for it to kind of fly up like a celebration thing right. and i showed my husband and he's like it looks like a cheap powerpoint i was like oh it does look a bit tacky. oh right <laughs> <laughs> so then i was like okay i'll handwrite it i'll handwrite it so that that's where the calligraphy came into place actually let me see if i've got the so this is the how what how did Firefly do with the uh, um, translation? Like, was it legible? Did um, it make sense? Did you have to tweak it when you did? No, the... I typed in the Chinese. Oh, words. so you just typed it in so, yourself? Okay, so that yeah, makes sense. yeah, yeah. But I think it'll come up the same. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this is where I found out that you can do timeline based. I love this. I love that you're discovering Photoshop. Yeah. Timeline. It's so I'm cool. Make this big again. <laughs> Do I just try it? Ah, it's better. Yeah, like so, this frame by frame thing took so long. <laughs> I didn't realize how many times I'd have to write these words. It felt like frame by frame animation. At, yeah, yes. I felt like back at school and had to like practice writing Chinese, but just to get this animation That's on cool. the thing, it's pretty pretty fun. And the the cool thing was I also found a way to do like a cheat code animation by um, expanding the sky by using the perspectives. So then it can move from left to right if I use a transition in the timeline. I don't know if that makes sense. Mm, not um, sure what you mean. You mean you're stretching it out even further than you would need so that you have... You can... Let me show you the okay. Ready. last bit of this animation. Is it this one? This one. I think at the end it's got... Um, so now you have to watch all of this <laughs> cool. from the start. But at the end where the dragon moves, the sky and the clouds are moving and then the water at the bottom is also moving. And I just did that in Photoshop because I I expanded the sky. Like I cut out the sky and I cut out the, the water. And then in the perspective mode, you stretch it out of the screen and then you can get it to move from left to right. So then it's like this... Did you see oh yeah, that? I saw that. It was quick, but I saw <laughs> yeah. it. <laughs> it was quick, yeah. So like just to play around with the animation function in because that's, cool. that's what I just discovered you could do that. It's a great idea. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, that's it. That's cool. And so did you just have to kind of teach yourself the animation in the timeline? You, you watch a tutorial? Yeah, so and, I think just... yeah, so I I think with when I first started motion graphics, I was learning animation from scratch and I really liked how like animations can continuously loop. Yeah. And I think when I found out you could get the timeline thing on Photoshop, as you can see, I was like learning. I was like, oh, you can do like um, frame by frame animation. And I was like, oh, I wonder if you can do timestamp because I've, like, I've used After Effects a couple of times, but it's a lot more full on to use. Uh, whereas this one, I was like, oh, let's see if it looks realistic. And I just tried this thing that I saw on TikTok. I was like, oh, it really works. So yeah. I might use it again for something else. That's yeah. awesome. I do love animating mm -hmm. in, in Photoshop. Um, it's one mm -hmm. of those things where it's quite it's quite simple and rudimentary in the way that it yeah. works because it actually has been in Photoshop for yeah, really long Yeah, I feel like time. there's so many functions that I haven't even discovered. Photoshop's actually terrible crazy like Photoshop. that. And Photoshop's been around forever. So there's yeah. so much happening yeah. under the hood. With Photoshop, mm. um, but um, yeah, I do love do love the timeline. Um, so, I have a couple of questions. Um, mm -hmm. Alejandro was saying uh, the orange color of the dragon with the dark blue of the clouds is wonderful. Do you use okay. an image reference to select that striking color harmony? No, I think I'm very low-fi when it comes to making decisions. I think it probably comes down to how I paint and it's always by intuition like when I'm painting physical artworks like with this one um I just like put on the paint and if I like it I continue if I don't I change um and I think similar for this because I started with a color palette that I really I knew I love like with the magentas and the oranges mm. I was like oh like a nice contrasting color with like I think initially I really wanted something sky blue but then I wanted the moon in there so 
like what's a nice transition so I'd pick something that's slightly blue that moves towards black that kind of can blend nicely with some of the water reflections um that's probably my as much as my decision making as it wasn't like if, I, if you ask me what type of dragon artwork I was making before I created this for the session I would have said I have no idea like it could have ended up with that caterpillar thing <laughs> right yeah no and I yeah. like that I think it's a really great approach like not trying to sort of um approach something with the end goal in mind but trying to treat mm. it like a bit of an organic process yeah. which is quite interesting because that's kind of your approach to from what i understand your approach to your other artwork as well mm. it's like an organic yeah. um you know sort of i guess you find out what it's going to look like at the end like it's yeah. pur it's purposeful i'm not you know saying that there's no intention but um that idea of letting the flow kind of take you where it naturally yeah might go that's it's, my understanding of what you were saying before yeah that, no, you're definitely right it's probably at the stage where I start getting the export that I'm like oh this is like getting close to what I want to yeah. use and then from there that's when I start thinking about the composition and which is why I'm started to think about like the the portrait or the landscape mode depending on what I'm going to use it for and then like the long body I started thinking about because that's the dragon I wanted to focus on yeah. and then the background because it's secondary to what I'm creating came after and then it was just around matching and what kind of looked good mm. that's awesome well I love that um and uh James Barnard in chat says uh, joy is the layer mayor <laughs> and ever since you typed it, it's been really difficult in my brain to try to say out loud. <laughs> Layer mare. Lay it's really Layer weird. Mare. Nice. <laughs> oh, this is this is my normal. Look, it's like six, five, There's four, seven. It's not even in like, order. Everybody this does my... that. Everybody yeah. does that. Um, well, that's that's fantastic. Well, thank you. Uh, unless there's more, uh, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, it's been really great seeing this, and there's a couple of tips in there that I didn't know about. Um, always got to get back into Firefly and try out some of the, um, yes. those longer kind of, um, you know, very descriptive kind of things. I often keep it quite short, but I think I need to drill down a little bit deeper. Yeah. No, you know what everyone should try when you get home and when you like get time to play, like put in the lyrics of your favorite song, just to see what it looks like as an artwork. <laughs> and then you put in the effects of like stuff that you like, like I love glowy stuff. So I'm going to put like bioluminescence, I like yep. 3d, I'm going to chuck that in. Um, some of my favorite ones I always default to is probably there's like one, uh, let me see if I can find Ooh the mouse i think in five uh under themes uh no photo manipulation oh, i think yeah. this one just kind of blends things nicely if you're kind of going for something not realistic something um like lots of different things mashed up together it just kind of fits it nicely um i use splattering and paint splattering because it's it gives the effect of a lot of the artworks that i create to kind of give that consistency in what i do so i think it's until you start playing um that you find what you like and what you gravitate to so start mixing the effects start mixing the the stuff that you like but also what i also actually one of the tips i forgot to share is in couple of the dragons I exported I used my own image of the fluid stuff that I got as a firefly export and I re-put it um, I put it back into firefly right. as an image reference to get that consistency in the style with a different character mm -hmm. so that's another tip so if you've got something that you love in terms of a color so these are my favorites that I've done recently cool. that I've favorited um like I'll use something, so these two, you can see they're using very similar palettes because I use the same image prompt that I got, which was, and, and these as well, that's why they have consistency in the color. And it yeah. was, uh, which one, these ones. Yeah, these are amazing. Um, yeah, so it's high. Well, these are all the dragons that I <laughs> played <laughs> around with that I thought was, that I thought was worthy. <laughs> um, but yeah, these are some of my other artworks. Well, people is something I'm trying to work on. But yeah. Oh, amazing. Number two. Mm. Excellent. All right, then we'll um, follow Joy on Instagram and check it out. We'll, we've got her details down the bottom. Thank you, um, everyone, for joining us. And thank you, Joy, for joining us today. Thank, thank you, you so much for coming on Adobe Live. No, oh, thank you. It was so much fun. All right. Well, um, you have a great time at Ceramics because I know you're going straight thank to you. Ceramics <laughs> right after this. Yes. So it's a big crafty kind of day. Um, yes. Have a fantastic craft afternoon and we'll see uh, all of you on the next Adobe Live. Thanks thank again, you. Joy. Bye. 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 Hey.